I love growing squash. But what I don't love is that every single year without fail, the squash vine borers move in. Did the BTs work? Hey guys, Amanda here at the Front Acre. As you can see, I am in my garden, specifically with my squash. Um, I've got a blue hubbard here. I've got some, looks like maybe an acorn squash here. There's some delicata, some butter squash hybrids, pumpkins, all of the squash. Got some zucchini over there. I love growing squash. But what I don't love is that every single year without fail, the squash vine borers move in and wipe them out. Now, last year I planted a blue hubbard squash, which acts as a trap crop. It attracts the squash vine borers to it first so that the rest of the squash have a chance to actually produce, you know, at least until they get to them too. And it really did work last year. The blue hubbard got completely wiped out, but the rest of the plants were able to grow and produce before they eventually succumbed as well. But we still still did get a really good crop, which was wonderful. I keep trying to find ways to really combat these squash vine borers. And if you saw in a recent video uh, with my summer garden tour, if not, I'll go ahead and put it up here in the link. And you can go back and watch that to see the rest of the garden. But in that video, I mentioned that I had struck up a conversation with a, another local farmer at the farmer's market. And we were talking about the squash vine borers and how terrible they are. And she gave me a couple of tips. One of them was to plant radishes around the base of the squash, which I don't know if you can see in the video here, but we have, oh, my son planted these very densely. <laughs> right here's a little carpet of radishes here. But then another tip she gave me was to actually inject some BTs into the stem. If you're familiar with squash vine borers, the adult is really kind of a attractive moth. Excuse the ducks, they're right behind you. But the adult doesn't really do much damage at all. The problem is when the adult lays her eggs, those larvae or caterpillars bore into the squash vine and eventually eat its death, which is our problem. So, she mentioned injecting BTs directly into the stem and that would kill the squash vine borer larvae that cause the problem. If you've been around here very long, you know I grow my garden organically. I don't usually like to use any kind of pesticide or herbicide at all, even organic. But I'm getting really tired of losing my squash every year to these guys. So I'm going to give it a try. This is an organic pesticide. It's actually a bacteria that when it gets into the alkaline stomachs of the insects, it releases a toxin in that alkaline environment that causes them to die. Now, humans have an acidic stomach, obviously, so it isn't a problem for humans. Um, so between that and the fact that I'm not actually going to be putting it on the fruit or even the leaves where it might injure beneficials, I'm going to be injecting it directly into the vine. For those reasons, I feel okay about trying it out. If it means getting a better crop without my plants dying, then you know, this is going to be less chemicals on them than if I were to have to buy all those vegetables at the store. So, we're going to try it see how it goes. So I have my BTs. There are mul different, multiple different strains of this bacteria. You want to make sure you get the right, the one that is for specifically moth, larvae, caterpillars, um, etc. So that's the one I have. They did not have a concentrate, so I'm just using this spray. I also have a syringe and a needle. Just using what I have on hand. So this is actually a sharps one. These are for the goats. <laughs> But now they're for using it for the garden. Um, and then just a jar to put the BTs in or using with the syringe because spray bottle not working so good. So let's try it. As you can see, I have already got damage on 
these, especially this blue hybrid, you see it is wilting. We've had rain all day. This should be the happiest plant in the world, but as you see, it is not. It is wilting and that's because it is actively dying because of these worms. So we're gonna treat this one first. You can see that there are, uh, when you see this, what's called sawdust coming out of the little holes in the vine, that is where they have eaten their way in. That is where our problem's at. So that's where we're going to inject. Mm -hmm. I'll get a couple of doses worth in here because I'm going to check over the rest of these as well. Because I think these are starting to get some as two. Now, according to our research, we're going to need one mil or one cc per injection. So I have a one mil syringe here. I figured that would just make it easier. Just go ahead and fill her up each time. All right, let's do this. The articles that we read said to inject um, anywhere. We've seen some that said an inch above the soil or two inches above the soil, inch and a half. Also, it mentioned injecting an inch above your hole. So I'm just going to go up here where it's kind of two inches above the soil and an inch above the hole and hope for the best. Now when squash vines mature, they actually get hollow in the middle and that is where our buggy is living. Now, is there an alternative to this? Yes and no. Um, as far as prevention, not really. Eggs are very small, very hard to find, so it's hard to actually prevent it. I've heard you could try putting foil around the base of the stem. I'm not sure if that actually works or not. The other option is once you see these holes is to do basically surgery where you try to get inside of the vine and manually kill said booger. Now I have done said surgery on squash plants many times. It's not easy. And the big problem is there are usually multiple worms in there and getting them all is very hard if not impossible. And you end up tearing up your plant pretty bad in the process. This branch actually looks pretty healthy. It's not wilting like that one. So I'm thinking this side might be okay. And I don't see any holes in it yet. And I, except down towards the base and we already injected there. So I think this one's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to my trellis squash. Make sure there aren't any there. And you know, probably just go ahead and get the base of each one. Kind of as a preventative, because like I said, I have seen adults, and where there are adults, there are eggs and there are larvae. And I really don't want to lose my crop this year. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I will keep you posted. I will let you know how it turns out, and if this guy survives, and how those ones do. Last thing is, it is recommended to inject them all again once every seven to 10 days to break the cycle of the next generation. And in theory, because we are killing off all the babies, there will be fewer adults in future. So that will help reduce the numbers and help us out there as well. Here's hoping. I'll have to inject more squash. Well, it's been three days since we injected the squash and that far side of the blue hubbard is not looking any better so it might have been too late for that one this side still looks okay so hopefully this branch will still do all right um, i did notice when i was looking at these ones on the trellis earlier today that there is evidence that several of them have been infested with the squash vine borer. Hopefully those injections I gave will be enough to kill off the larvae before they can do any damage. We will see. 
Another update on this uh, blue hybrid squash here. This side is done. It, it, it died. And the other side looked like it was starting to as well. I found a bunch of more holes in it and treated again. And it looks like it might be bouncing back. So this side looks like it's just radish. might actually make it. We will see. All right. Um, back here with another squash update. Did the BTs work? Well, I think it did, but I think the key is to really stay on top of reapplying it, which I haven't done. Um, yeah, I probably haven't used it in at least three weeks. Yeah. And as you can see, these squash are suffering a bit because of it. So that is on me. I actually saw some sawdust holes on this delicata the other day. And yeah, that was before the weekend probably. And I I'm just now getting out to it on Wednesday. So I think it did work. I think it did help. But like I said, you just really got to stay on top of re-injecting it every week um, when I was doing that everything was great when I started slacking things started not looking so good like this um, they're just you can just see on the vines aren't looking so good the leaves are starting to die off a bit and some of it could be other diseases kicking in as well but there are definitely flush vine spores in this plant probably some of the others as well my acorn squash has gone back and forth a couple times where, you know, it obviously was infested. I treated. It got better. got infested again. The acorn squash is still alive-ish, but I think just the stress from, from the bug load, it's only produced one good squash. But really, none of my plants have produced as well as last year. I don't know if that's just because it's a different location or different weather. I'm not sure. These ones over here, I haven't really seen any squash of my borers on them. They've been doing really good. So maybe I'm definitely going to plant more of those next year because these are the autumn frost squash. They're my favorite anyway. Um, so definitely plant more of those next year because they seem to be resisting the squash of my borers pretty well. Um, whereas acorn, not so much. Delicata, are producing the best this year but I am seeing some squash vine borer pressure on those and then there's the zucchini yeah zucchini I feel always get a really big hit from them even more than the winter squashes and I believe that's because they tend to have a softer vine and it's easier for them to eat flip side because they grow so fast they don't necessarily succumb to them as quickly they only just died like this past week I just pulled them out the other day because they were the the one was still alive and still had some flowers on it but it just was there it was gotten to where they were at the root system and it was just done so I pulled them out um but it did produce a lot of squash for us. So I did get a lot of squash out of it, which I'm happy with. So that was okay. And actually, I think I only treated the zucchini one time because it is away from these squash. I just forget. So I think overall the zucchini still did okay despite not being treated well. Um, and then that blue Hubbard, yeah, it totally, oh, hello butterfly. Oh, hello butterfly. <laughs> But the blue Hubbard totally died, which I kind of expected it to. Um, but that was its job to attract all of the squash vine borers over there first. So these had a chance to get established more. So going forward, I'm still going to be planting the blue Hubbards as a trap crop because that seems to really work well. I'm going to try the radishes again next year, but earlier and probably like succession planting a little bit. I might succession plant these as well. Hmm. That is a thought, just to spread out the pressure a little bit. Home setting is all about experimenting, trying something, see if it works. If great, do it again. If not, try something else. That's just how it works. And then definitely going to be planting more of the autumn frost 
and probably the delicata, but maybe skipping out on the acorn that aren't really doing so hot and not really holding up against that pressure. Um, same with the pumpkin. I only have the one pumpkin and yeah, I don't think it's, I don't know. I think it's definitely suffering from the squash line borers. Um, and it's just that it's just only produced the one. I don't know why. I think I will go ahead and keep this on hand and try it again next year and try to be more consistent with it. It gets hard when all those other harvests start coming in. We've had tomatoes out the wazoo lately and after spending all morning picking or preserving those, I, the last thing I want to do is to come out here and inject squash, but you know, such is life. Sometimes you got to do things you don't want to do. So that being said, I am going to go ahead and inject these ones that I'm seeing some uh, activity on and hopefully we'll get several more squash before the end of the season. So I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that gave you a little insight into a possible solution for your squash vine borers if you suffer from them. If you do struggle with squash vine borers, please leave me a comment down below and let me know some things that you have tried. If they worked, if they didn't work, I would love to get other input and hear other ideas from other gardeners out there. Cause like I said, you'd never know until you try something. On that note, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful blessed day and week. Happy harvesting. See you later.